Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about M.1.3 and M.1.4. So the first thing we're going to talk about is comparing and ordering rational numbers. So let's get into it. So we have three symbols <coughs> um, that tells us, you know, whether or not a quantity is greater than another quantity, less than another quantity, or equal to another quantity. And those symbols look like this. Um, I want to mention that you know, we can read statements with these symbols in two different ways, backwards or forwards. So, for example, we have this three symbol four. Okay, so the first way we can read it is from left to right, just like we read regular text, and you know, um, unless you're in Japan, I guess. Uh, so, from left to right, what we say is three is less than four. So, since the point is pointing towards three, that gets a less than. Three is less than four. Okay, that point tells us less than. Now, <clears throat> we can also read this from right to left. So we can start at four and, uh, and read the other way. And since the thing is opening up towards four, um, that symbolizes greater. Okay, so the way we read it is four is greater than, because it's opening up towards four, three. Okay, four is greater than three is how we read it backwards. Notice that these two things say the same thing. Three is less than four, and four is greater than three. These two, these two things mean the same, the same thing, okay? So let's practice saying <clears throat> these statements and words. So typically we read left to right. So one way we can say this, since it's opening towards five, we can say five is, and since it's opening towards 5, greater than 1. How could you say it another way? Well, we could read it from right to left. We could say 1. Well, this time the point is next to 1. So 1 is the point less than 5. Okay, so those are two ways we can say the same thing. All right, what about this guy right here? <clears throat> x, who knows what x is? We could say, from left to right, we could say x is less than 3 because the point indicates less. If we read it the other way, we can say 3 is, well, now if we read it this way, since it's pointing, um, since it's opening towards 3, that's greater than. So 3 is greater than x. Either way is the same, saying the same thing. <clears throat> what about this thing? Well, when we have inequalities like this, that's what we call these, these symbols, uh, inequalities. When we have something like this, I usually start in the middle, all right? With, you know, whatever is being sandwiched between the two numbers or whatever we might have on either side. So what I say here is, I say y is, I look to the left of y and it's open. So I say y is greater than, well, what comes after that? 2. So that's me reading <coughs> uh, from right to left. But if I read the other way, if I read the other way, I can say y is... Well, this time, since I'm starting here and I'm reading from left to right, it's pointing towards y, the little points towards y, so y is less than 4. All right, so that is how we can uh, compare two different numbers or quantities with inequality signs. Okay, so the next topic we're going to talk about is ordering decimal numbers. So how do we do it? Well, the largest number, <coughs> we, uh, we look at the largest placed value first, okay? So I'm looking at these three numbers that are ordered, and what I notice is that both the first number and the last number have a 1 in the 1's place value, but this one does not. This has a 0. So since the 0 is smaller than 1, this number... 0.123 is going to be the smallest out of the numbers. So if I'm ordering this from least to greatest, 
the least is going to be 0 0.123. Again, because we don't have a 1 there, we have a 0. So now we look at the other two, and we look at the next place value, which is the tenths place. So we look right here, and we say, okay, well, they had the same whole number, they both had 1, but which one has the bigger tenths place? Well, this guy does, right? This has a 1, where this one has a 0 in the tenths place, where the first one has a 0 in the tenths place. So this guy is going to be the biggest of the bunch. So what comes after this is 1.001, .001, and then finally the largest one is 1.101. .001. Alright, let's do some more practice here. So we have some numbers, and we want to first figure out which has the lowest um, ones value. And it looks like, so we have 7, 6, 7, 3, 6. Well, this guy is going to be the smallest because 3 is smaller than 7, 6, 7 or 6. So this comes out. And now, <coughs> it's the next one that comes is, is between the 6s. So notice that both of these numbers have a 9 in the tenths place. However, this guy has a little bit more, right? Because if we look to the next place value, this guy uh, right here, it's not written, but it's understood to be 0 after that. Okay, if there's nothing written there, it's understood to be 0. So which one is going to be bigger, 6.92 or 6.90? Well, it's got to be 6.90, so that's coming after, followed by 6.92, that's another 6, and now we look at the 7s, so 7.13 versus 7.31, well, we got to look at the tenths place first and compare, and since 3 is bigger than 1, this guy is the largest, so what comes after is 7.13. And finally, 7.31 is the largest. Okay, so that's our ordering decimals. Let's do some more practice here. Order the numbers from least to greatest. So this time it looks like I'm looking at all of these numbers and I don't see a whole number in sight. So we now compare the tenths place. So I'm looking at the tenths place, which is this number directly after the decimal point. And I'm seeing which has the smallest value here. And it looks like, it looks like this guy is my smallest, right? Because I have a 1 in the tenths place, and that's the only one that has a 1 in the tenths place. So my smallest is going to be 0 0.1. Now I look to see if there's any 2s. I see <coughs> a 2 here and a 2 here. Which one's bigger? Well, now we compare the hundredths place, which is the next number after the tenths place. And in this case, 1 is bigger, or sorry, 1 is smaller than 8, so this guy is going to be next on the list. Followed by 0 0.28. So those are my 2s. Now I look for the 3 in the tenths place, and I have I have two of those here. So which one is smaller? That's got to be 0 0.35, because 5 in the hundredths place is bigger than 8 in the hundredths place. Smaller. Smaller than 8. So 0 0.35 comes before 0 0.38. All right, now 4. I only have one 4, so that's got to be next, 0 0.49. Fives, I have 0 0.54 and 0 0.51. Well, 0 0.51 has to be has to be smaller. Cuz the 1 is smaller than the 4 in the hundredths place. Okay, and then I have 0.6 and 0.62. Well, remember, this 0.6 secretly has a 0 in the hundredths place. So the smaller one has to be 0 0.60. 0, 0 is smaller than 2. So, all 
All right. So that's my, um, those are my numbers ordered from least to greatest. Let's do this next one. Now I have some whole numbers to deal with. So the first thing I'm noticing is that I have all of these are, are whole numbers and some change. And the smallest whole number I see is one. So we have these guys. Oh, I don't know why this is written twice. Let's get rid of this. This 1.35. So out of those, which one's smaller? Well, it has to be 1, right? Because I have 1.000 forever, and then I have 1.35. So since 1 <coughs> has 0 in the tenths place, and this one has 3 in the tenths place, the 1 has to be smaller. So 1, 1.35. And now we look at the 2s, and it looks like the rest of them are 2s. So we want to see which of these has the smallest number in the tenths place. So right after the decimal place. And it looks like this guy has a zero in the tenths place, and so does this guy. So out of those, which one's smaller? Well, then you go to the hundredths place, and you say, oh, well, this is one, this is four, so this guy has to be smaller. All right, so this comes next followed by 2.04. All right, so far so good. Now we look, what's the, the next smallest number in the, um, in the tenths place? And it appears that that's gonna be 2.33, right? Three is smaller than five and seven, so that goes. And what's next, the fives? So out of these two, which one's smaller? Well, it's got to be 2.52, because 2 is smaller than 4 in the hundredths place. So there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, and what comes next? So 2.71 or 2.7? Well, it's got to be this guy, right? That's smaller than 2.71, because it's 2.70. 0 is smaller than 1. So that is, those are my numbers in order from least to greatest. Excellent. Now, on the T's test, you're going to have questions like this, and sometimes they're going to throw some fractions in there. Now, all you can do with fractions is you can use the calculator that they provide you on the computer to change fractions to decimals. We know how to do that, right? Let's look at an example. So when we have a simple fraction like this, it simply means 1 divided by 3, right? We know that. So if I put 1 divided by 3 in the calculator, I get that this is about 0.33 repeating, all right? This guy, 5 out of 6 in the calculator, 5 divided by 6 is 0.833 repeating. 7 over 8 is 0.875. What about 1 and 3 fourth? What is that as a decimal? Well, 1 and 3 fourth means we have a whole number, and then whatever is left over, it's basically 1 plus the 3 fourths. So if we do 3 divided by 4 in the calculator, we get 0.75, right? I'm like checking myself because it's late. <laughs> um, this guy is going to be 1 plus 2 thirds. Well, two thirds is 0. 0.66667. Uh, let's just say 0. 0.67 to simplify it. Um, so now we can order these because they're in decimal form, right? So what's the smallest? Well, it's got to be one of the th one of the numbers that isn't that doesn't have a whole number. So n these two can't be the smallest, right? Because they have one. Um, this guy is going to be the smallest because it has a 3 in the tenths place where the other ones have an 8. So the smallest is going to be this guy, followed by, followed by this guy, right? Because both of these have an 8 in the tenths place, but then this one has a 3 in the hundredths where this one has a 7. So the 3 in the hundredths has got to be smaller than the one with the 7. So this is going to be next, followed by 0.875.
And then with these guys, this one has to be smaller because the 6 in the tenths place is smaller than the 7 here. So 1.67 followed by 1.75. So these are numbers from uh, smallest to largest. Okay, let's do some practice here. So first thing, if you see a fraction, change it to a decimal. So this is the same as 8 plus 3 divided by 4, so just 8.75. So we have 8, 8.75, 8.43. So from least to greatest, this is going to be, well, 8 has to be the smallest because the other ones have some fractions added to them. Followed by 8.43, because 4 is the smaller number in the tenths place versus 7, and then 8.75, so this is our answer here. All right, let's do this one. I'm going to change all of these into decimals so that we can see what's going on here. Okay, 62, that's a weird number that is right there. I'm just going to ignore it because it's like, why is that even there? Okay, 3 out of 8, so point, point 0.375. 3 out of 4 is 0.75, 11 out of 16, 0.6875, and 1 half we know is 0.5. All right, so now we can order these things. The smallest has got to be this because 3 is the smallest number in the tenths place. We have 3, 7, 6, and 5 in the tenths place. This one has to be the smallest number. Okay, the next smallest is 0.5. The next is 0.6875. I'm just looking at the tenths place in this one. And then 0.75. So that is my order here. All right, let's do this one. So this is 1 plus 3, 3 out of 5 is 0.6. So this is simply 1.6. This is 1.45. We don't have to change this. We don't have to change 1.8. This guy, 1 plus 3 fourths is 1.75. So from least to greatest, from least to greatest, we look at the tenth spot, and this has the smallest number in the tenth spot. So this comes first, followed by 1.6, followed by 1.75, and finally 1.8 is going to be the largest out of these. Let's do some practice comparing with the uh, the inequality sign. So we have less than, greater than, or equal. 0.6 blank 3 out of 5. Well, 3 out of 5 is 0.6. If we put in the calculator, 3 divided by 5 is 0.6. So these guys are equal. 0 0.045, is it bigger than, less than, or equal to 0.45? Well, we look at the tenths place. The tenths place here is smaller. It's a 0, whereas the tenths place here is a 4. So this guy has to be less than 0.45, right? What about one-third versus a fourth? So there was this old, I, I don't know if it was an urban legend or whatever, but there was something going on that, like, people were mad because the, like, McDonald's came out with a third pounder and they were charging more for it than a quarter pounder, but it makes sense because a third is bigger than a quarter, right? The the bigger the numerator, uh, sorry, the bigger the denominator is with the same number on top, the smaller the actual number is. So one divided by four is smaller than one divided by three. All right, so one divided by three, one over three is uh, is bigger than one fourth. Yeah, I don't know if that was a rumor. I don't know where I heard that from either. The McDonald's quarter pounder versus third pounder controversy. Anyway, one and three fourths. One plus 0.75 is 1.75, of course. Well, compare the tenths place. Six is smaller than seven, so this number is going to be smaller than 1.75. The, the point faces that. So 1.62 is less than 1.75. Here, okay, yeah, we have a zero in the tenths place, but now let's look 
at the hundreds place. We have a zero here in the hundreds place, where here we have a two. So this guy has got to be less than 0 0.02. This guy has to be less than 0 0.20 because we're comparing the tenths place. Zero is less than two. 6.389. Well, the 6 and the 3 are the same in both cases, so we move on to the hundredths place. 8 and 7, which is bigger? Well, the 8's bigger, so that guy's going to be greater. 5% versus 0.5. Well, 5%, we remember we talked about this, percent means per 100. So what's 5 out of 100? Well, 5 out of 100 is simply 0.05. Right, if you put that in the calculator, 5 divided by 100. And of course, that's going to be less than 0.5 because 0 is in the tenths place. 0 is smaller than 5. Okay, 100%, that means one, per 100. So that's 100 per 100. 100 divided by 100 is 1. What's bigger, 1 or 1 1.2? Well, 1 is less than 1.2. Okay, 20% versus 2 out of 5. 20% is 20 per 100. And if we put that in the calculator, that's just, that's just 0.2. 2 out of 5 in the calculator is going to be 0.4. So 0.2 has got to be less than 0.4. Okay, so let's talk about ordering negative numbers. So basically, we have a number line here, and the further left you go, the smaller the number is, okay? So the further left you go on the number line, the, the smaller the number is. So like, negative 2 is a bigger number than negative 8. Um, 8 is a bigger number than 2, all right? So the more left you are, the smaller you are. So let's compare these numbers. Negative 3 versus negative 2. Well, another way to think about negatives is like the larger the actual number is, not counting the negative sign, the smaller the negative value is. So negative 3 is less than negative 2. Negative 10 is greater than negative 30. 1 is greater than negative 1. Negative 1 fourth. Well, Let's put this in decimal form. This is negative 0.25, 1 divided by 4. And this is negative 2 divided by 3, which is 0.67. Negative 0.67. So which is bigger, uh, 0.67 or 0.25? Well, this guy, this guy uh, 0.67 is bigger, which means that this is actually smaller, right? Because it's a more negative number. So this thing is going to be greater than negative two-thirds. Okay, negative 0.6. So 3 out of 5 is 0.6. So this is, again, negative 0.6. These guys have to be equal to each other. Um, again, so this is negative 1 and 1 third. Well, 1 third is going to be 0.33. So this is negative 1.33. And negative 2 and a 6, well, 1 6 is going to be 0.17 about. This is negative 2.17. And this is a bigger negative number, so that means it's smaller. So this guy, negative 1 and 1 third, is bigger than negative 2 and 1 6. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, we're going to talk about solving equations in one variable. So the first thing we need to know is what is an equation? It's a statement that says two quantities are equal. So we have some examples here. 2 plus 2 equals 4. 5 plus 1 equals 6. These are all equations. 2x minus 4 equals 12. Another equation that says two things are equal. 1 plus 9 equals 20. That's a weird equation, but it's still an equation. Equations can be true or false. Now, notice that we have a false equation right here. This is an equation because we have an equal sign, but it's false because we know 1 plus 9 does not equal 20. On the other hand, these other ones are true. We don't really know what x is, so that's just going to be 
Actually, we might not even say that's true. We might just say that's like a neutral because we, we're not really sure what x is. So, parts of an equation. You will need to know this for the t's test. First one is variables, letters which represent unknown quantities. Next thing is coefficients. This is numbers that are multiplied by variables. Constants, a number that isn't attached to a variable. And finally, terms, anything in an equation stuck together by multiplication. So let's practice identifying these things in equations. Let's look at our first example. We have 2x minus 4 plus 20 equals 30x. So my variables are just my letters, right? So my variables, we have x. That's pretty much it. It's all the variables that I see here. Um, my coefficients are going to be the numbers that are attached to the variables. So in that case, what's attached to the variables? We have 30 is attached to x. And we also have 2 is attached to x. So those are my coefficients there. My constants are the numbers all by themselves, not attached to variables. So my constants, I have a negative 4 and I have a 20. And finally, my terms is anything that's stuck together with multiplication. It could be a single number. It doesn't matter. Just anything that is, that is um, stuck together with multiplication, even if it's multiplication by 1, right? So like terms, we have 2x. That's all stuck together with multiplication. We have negative 4 times 1. Of course, we don't write the, the 1, but... That's a term. We have a 20. That's a term. We also have a 30x. That's stuck together with multiplication. So these are all these are all terms here. Okay. Let's look at this guy down here. Um, let's see. What are my variables? Well, I see x and I see y. So those are going to be my variables here. What about my coefficients? What are my coefficients? Well, that's going to be the numbers attached to the variable. So I have a 2. I also have a negative 3. So a 2, a negative 3. I also have a negative 30 that's attached to those variables. And that's it. What about my constants? So these are the numbers that stand alone. We got an 8 and we got a 1. And finally, what about my terms? Starting from the left, this is all stuck together with multiplication. So 2xy is a term. The next thing that's stuck together is negative 3x squared. The next thing is just that, that little 8, just an 8. Then if we look at the right side, this thing is all stuck. Negative 30x squared, y squared. So negative 30x squared, y squared, no plus or minuses in between them. And finally, we have a 1. So these are going to be our terms. All right, how do we solve equations? Well, what we're doing when we solve equations is we're looking for um, the value of a variable that makes the equation true. We, some equations are easier to solve than others. Like this one is pretty easy. What value of x makes this a true statement? What number plus 2 equals 5? Well, it has to be 3, right? We can check it. 3 plus 2 equals 5. That is, that is true. This is a true statement, and so this is my answer. Let's look at another one. 10 minus a variable y equals 3. So 10 minus what number is equal to 3? Well, it has to be 7, and we can check that. 10 minus 7 equals 3. 3. This is true. So this is our solution right here. So an equation is like a balanced scale. When we say, some, when we say two things are equal, we want to picture it like a seesaw that's completely balanced. The weight on both sides are equal. So with that being said, whatever you do to one side of the seesaw, you have to do the other to keep it balanced. If you put a really fat person on this side, you have to put a really fat person on this side to keep it balanced, right? So if we're multiplying 5 times 4 in this equation, we better multiply x plus 2 times 4, or else it's going to be uneven, 
Okay, so that's the that's the idea here. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do the other. So here is a strategy to solve equations. We do the inverse operation. What are inverse operations? Basically, they're opposites. So for example, addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Multiplication and division are inverses. Squaring and square rooting are inverses. So let me show you how we do this. And you guys probably have seen this before many times, but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to look on the side with my variable. So in this case, it's going to be the left side. And we want to undo addition by 2 by doing the inverse. Okay, so what's the inverse of addition by 2? What's the opposite? Well, we just said addition and subtraction are opposites. So the opposite of adding 2 is subtracting 2. And remember the seesaw. Imagine this as a seesaw. If I'm taking 2 pounds away from the left side, I better take 2 pounds away from the right side. Now 2 minus 2 is 0, and so we have our variable x plus 0 is just x. 5 minus 2 is 3, and so we have solved our equation here. You can always check yourself by plugging the solution into the original equation. So our original equation was x plus 2 equals 5. If we plug in 3, we get 3 plus 2 equals 5. That's a true equation. All right, let's do the next one. So. I always draw a line through the equal sign, and I look on the left side because that's where my variable is, and I say, well, how do I get rid of subtraction by 3? I need to do the opposite of that, which is addition by 3. Those are inverse operations. So I need to add 3 to both sides to keep it balanced, and I get x is equal to 11. You can check that if you want. Now what about number 3? Now, when there's no sign between a number and a variable, or a number and another number, or whatever, it means multiplication. So this is secretly multiplication. So 2 times a number equals 4. What's the, so we look on the side with the variable, and we say, what's happening to the variable? Multiplication by 2 is happening to the variable. So we want to do the opposite of that. What's the opposite of multiplication by 2? What's the inverse? It's division by 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is simply 1. 1x. One we don't have to write the 1 in front. x is equal to 4 divided by 2 is 2. And you can check that. 2 times 2 is indeed 4. Let's look at this last one on this page. A number divided by 8 is equal to 10. How do I undo division? What's the opposite of division by 8? That's going to be multiplication by 8. So I need to multiply both sides by 8 to keep it balanced. Now, 8x over 8 is simply 1x, right? These 8s divide each other out, and we're just left with x is equal to 10 times 8, which is 80. And that does solve our original equation, x divided by 8 equals 10, because 80 divided by 8 does indeed equal 10. Okay, let's do some multi-step equations. Here's the strategy that I tell my students. You always, um, a good strategy is to undo the operation that is farthest or furthest. I, I don't know the grammar here, but basically uh, what's, what's the furthest away from the variable? That's what you want to do first. So like, first of all, I draw the line through the equal sign and I look on the left side because that's where my variable is. And I say, well, what's the operation that's happening furthest away from the variable? Well, multiplication is happening right next to the variable, right? But this negative 4 is, quote unquote, the furthest operation away. So I want to get rid of that first, okay? So how do I get rid of subtraction by 4? Well, I have to add 4 to both sides. That goes to 0. And then I rewrite my equation to make it look a little bit cleaner. 2x is equal to 10 plus 4, which is 14. Okay. Now I have 2 times a number equals 14, so I need to do the opposite of multiplication by 2, which is division by 2. I need to divide both sides by 2. And when I do that, I get 1x on the left, which is what I wanted, equals 7. And how do I check my solution? This is the most important thing you need to learn for the t's, to check the solution, because it's going to be 
the majority of your questions are going to be multiple choice. So if they say, hey, solve this equation, pick the right answer, well, you don't need to solve anything. All you have to do is do process of elimination, plug in your answers, and see which one makes a true equation. So like here, if, if 7 was one of our answer choices, the original equation was this, and you were like, let's just say, like, you didn't know how to solve this, and you're like, oh, I don't know. But seven was an answer choice, and you could say, well, hey, let me see what happens when I plug seven into the variable here. Well, I get two times seven minus four equals 10. Hey, look at this. The left side is 14 minus four, which is 10 equals 10. Hey, that's a true equation, so that must be the answer. Okay, so that's how you can check. You don't need to know how to solve complicated equations to get this section um, down for the T's. That's what I'm trying to say to you guys here. All right, so let's look at number two. I draw my line through the equal sign. I look to the left side because that's where my variable is. And then I do the operation that's furthest away from X. Well, division by three is pretty close, but the plus eight is furthest away. So I want to undo addition by 8 by subtracting 8 on both sides. When I do that, I get x over 3 equals 9 minus 8, which is 1. And now what I can do is I can undo division of 3 by multiplying both sides by 3. Now I have what I want. I have x equals 3, and I do encourage you to check your answer here. Let's look at number 3. I have x plus 3 divided by 5 equals 10. Drawing my line through, I'm looking at the left side because that's where my variable is. And plus 3 is pretty close to the x, but the division by 5 is furthest away. So I'm going to undo that first by multiplying both sides by 5. That cancels out on the left side. And I get x plus 3 equals 50. Finally, I can subtract 3 on both sides. The opposite of plus 3 is minus 3, so I get x is equal to 47. And that's my solution. Again, I encourage you to check that original equation to make sure that fits, that gives us a true equation. All right, so over here, I see subtraction by 1 is the furthest operation, so I add 1 to both sides. And I get 4 over 5x equals 8 plus 1, which is 9. Now, there's a few ways to do this, right? We can look at it as I can just extend this bar, and I can say, oh, well, hey, I have division by 5, so let's get rid of that. Division by 5, I can just multiply both sides by 5. And I get 4 times x is equal to 9 times 5, which is 45. Um... Dividing both sides by 4, since I have multiplication, I get 45 divided by 4, which I don't think that can be simplified. So that's it. That's our answer here. All right, let's talk about like terms. You can only add and subtract like terms. I like to think of it like you can't, you can't say, what's two apples plus three bananas? Doesn't make sense. You can't, call, I mean, you could say fruit, but you can't say like apple banana, right? Like, so that's the idea with like terms. You want them to be of the same type to be able to combine them. We know what two apples plus three apples is. That's five apples. But two apples plus three bananas, it's like, mm, I don't know. Um, what are like terms? Like terms have the same exact variables and the same exact exponents on the variables. That's all that's important here. We don't care about the numbers that are attached. We just need the same exponents and the same variables. So here's some examples of like terms. The first example, we have 2x squared and 4x squared. We have the same variable x and the same exponent on the variable 2. So that makes them like terms. Number two, we have 5x and negative 4x. We have the same variable x, and we have the same exponent on the x, which is 1. Number three, we do not have a variable here. I mean, w one way we can think of it as x to the 0, if you want to think of it like that. Anything to the 0 is 1. So we have the same variable x, the same exponent 0. 
okay? Right, because x to the 0 is 1, 3 times 1 is just 3, you get the idea. Alright, so let's do some practice solving equations by combining like terms. So what I like to do is, again, I like to draw my line through, and what I want to do is I want to group the x's together, and I want to group the constants together. So there's a bunch of different ways you can go about this, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo addition of 3x by subtracting 3x from both sides. Again, 6x and 3x are like terms, so 6x minus 3x is going to be 3x minus 9 equals 12. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 9 to both sides to undo subtraction of 9. And I get 3x is equal to 21. Divide both sides by 3 to give me x equals 7. Again, I encourage you to go back to the original equation, plug in 7 for x, and verify that we get a true equation. That's the big skill you need to know for this section on the t's. Okay, so here we go. Um, I have 4x minus 1 equals 2x. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, one way that we can do it is we can subtract 4x, right? Because we have a positive 4x, to, so to undo a positive 4x, we can subtract 4x from both sides. And when I do that, I'm left with negative 1 on the left, and on the right, I'm left with negative 2x. Now, I need to undo multiplication by negative 2 by dividing both sides by negative 2. And I get x is equal to negative 1 divided by negative 2. Those negatives cancel out, and I'm just left with a half. All right, let's do this next one. I have um, 5x plus 3 equals 9x plus 1. I'm going to move the x's over to the right side, getting 3 equals 4x plus 1. I'm going to move that 1 over by doing the opposite, which is subtraction by 1. And I'm left with 2 equals 4x. Finally, I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get x is equal to 2 over 4, which reduces to 1 over 2. All right. So here, I'm on the same side, so I can just combine them, just like you would 5 plus 10, we can combine that. Negative 5 and 10 make a positive 5x equals 6. Now I just divide both sides by 5, and I get x is equal to 6 fifths. All right, so again, I, don't, I can't stress this enough. The most important skill that you need is to just check your multiple choice solutions. You don't have to be a master at solving equations to get through this. You just want to see, hey, can I plug this in and get a true equation? Okay, so let's say 6 is one of your answer choices. Is 6 a solution to this equation? I don't have to solve anything, okay? I could if I wanted to, but I don't have to do that. What I can do is just replace 6 in from my variable and see if that makes a true equation. So let's try it. We have 3 times 6 minus 1 plus 5 equals 20. Is this true? Well, PEMDAS says do that first. 6 minus 1 is 5. 3 times 5 plus 5, does that equal 20? I think it does. 15 plus 5, yes. So this is true. So the answer is yes. That is a solution. Is 7 a solution to this guy? Well, again, we're just plugging 7 into our variable. This time our variable is y. So we have 3 times 7 plus 6. Does that equal 4? Mm, I don't think so. No, that's 27 equals 4. So that is a false equation. So the answer here is no. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.